So I was recently hired to DP a two day project for a social media campaign and the client had requested the entire project to be shot vertically. During the two day shoot, I had shared some BTS over on my Instagram and I had a bunch of you guys hitting me up asking me questions about my vertical Komodo rig. So in today's video, I am going to just show you how I built out my Komodo in a vertical format. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get right into it. All right, so first things first, at the base of the entire rig is the Bright Tangerine Expert Kit. This rig consists of a left side NATO rail, a top NATO rail, right side NATO rail, and then a base plate that also works into the DJI RS2 and RS3 Pro gimbals. And it's also a quick release plate that slides onto a 15 millimeter rod dovetail riser plates, just like this. Oh, so this is kind of what we are working with when it comes to the base and heart of the entire rig. So the first thing that I wanted to make sure was accessible at all times during this two day shoot was the CFast card. So that means rigging the camera on its right side. So I always had access to swapping out the card if we needed to dump footage during the shoot. So knowing that I wanted the CFast card door facing up at all times, that means we have to take the base plate and mount it on the right side NATO rail. So we're gonna go ahead and do that first. This is the one downside that I found to this vertical rig is that the base plate only has one point of contact into this right side NATO rail. So during the day, I actually did have the base plate come loose one time where the camera rotated a little bit on the base plate. We're just gonna put this base plate right here on this right side NATO rail. And we're going to crank this sucker down as tight as we possibly can to make sure that it stays. All right, we want to make sure that we can get the top handle on and off easily. So we're gonna have to take off the top NATO rail because as you can see here, this corner kind of overhangs on the left NATO rail and it makes it hard to get a top handle here, which is completely normal because you wouldn't actually put a top handle here uh, in its normal configuration, the top handle goes here. So we're just gonna take this off so we can access this NATO rail much easier All right, so now that the top nano rail is off, we can take this top handle and slide it right onto this left side, just like this. And now we have quick access to being able to get the top handle on and off the camera. So we're gonna take it off for right now while we build the rest of the rig. So the next thing that I'm gonna to add to the camera is this very small NATO rail, which I'm going to mount right here on the bottom of the Komodo. And the reason why I'm putting this NATO rail here is because we needed to run a wireless transmitter over to my first AC so we could pull focus for me all day. Boom. So we have this little tiny NATO rail right here on the bottom of the Komodo, which is technically the left side of the camera now. Uh, but now that'll allow us to quickly slide on our Hollyland system once we are ready to put that on. All right, so the next piece we are adding is this SDI relocator cable. Just makes it easier when you need to disconnect and reconnect the SCI during power cycles and things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and put this onto the top of the Komodo, which is technically the right side in this rig. And yeah, I just had it mounted right up here in this top left hole. All right, once that's in and it's nice and tight, we're gonna go ahead and plug the SDI cable right into the back of the Komodo, lock that in. And the next thing we're going to add is our V-mount plate, which the plate that I currently have is the Tilta Advanced Power Module. Uh, I don't hate it I and mean, I don't love it, but this is what I have. So this is what we're gonna use. All right, so now we have our V-mount plate on. We have our SCI quickly accessible over here on the right side of the rig. And the next thing that we want to add to the rig is probably the base plate. So we're going to take our handy dandy quick release space plate and just slide the camera right in. All right, cool. So now the camera is starting to really come together. Whoops. So for this project, we were actually gonna run Tokina Vista Primes, but unfortunately the shipping for our rental was delayed and they didn't arrive in time. So we had to revert back to the trusty Sigma 18 and 35, which 
I mean, this is a great lens. It gets the job done. I do have a follow focus gear on the lens because I don't have the cinema version clearly. Um, but yeah, it worked great. So we're going to go ahead and slap this on. All right. So now that we have basically the entire heart and base of the rig set up, the next thing that I think I'm going to add is the top handle, which this is also the bright tangerine top handle. Again, if you haven't seen my rig breakdown on the channel already, go ahead and give it a watch because I talk about this top handle and why I love it so much. But on the front of the top handle, I do have a small rig. Uh, what is this articulating arm slash ball mount thing? And this is what we're going to mount the monitor to. And then on the right side of the top handle, I actually did get a couple questions about this piece as well. This is just a one inch 15 mil rod that screws into a three eighths mount like you can see right here. Uh, then I just have a small rig hot shoe mount right here and I can just add my shotgun microphone right off the right side of the rig and it keeps it really clean and neat. So we're going to go ahead and put this on the camera now. So now we have a top handle. We got the base plate on there. Everything is feeling nice and secure. And the next thing that I'm going to want to add is probably my monitor. And for this job, I decided to run my small HD Cine 5. Uh, I absolutely love this monitor. It's a Vic boy for sure, but it's super bright. And I love the small HD monitors. I highly, highly recommend their products. Uh, we're going to go ahead, get this on the articulating arm. All right, so now we've got the monitor mounted up here on the camera. We're going to go ahead and put on our cables, run power to the monitor, and then also attach our wireless transmitter. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add this two-pin Limo to detap power cable for the monitor. Plug it into the top of the V-mount plate right here. And then we're just going to try to, I don't know, tidy up this cable by tucking it through the top handle right here underneath just kind of wrap it around a few times all right so the next thing that we're going to add is our hollyland mars 4k transmitter right to the left side of the camera on that little needle rail we put boom and just like that you can see we now have the mars 4k right there on the left side of the body nice and tidy take our sdi cable and run this from the monitor to the transmitter All right, we got the SDI cable in for the transmitter. We got power to the monitor. We are not going to plug in our actual SDI from the camera to the monitor yet because that is the last step if you know the Komodo protocol. So the next thing that I'm going to add is this little rosette mount, as you can see right here. We're going to add this to the back side of the camera on the rods right back here. And we're gonna face this rosette mount out to the right side because I want to run a handle to operate the camera on the easy rig with and just like that that's on right there all right so the next thing that we're going to add to the rig is the core shark fin v-mount plate this just allows you to hot swap v-mount batteries so you can keep the rig on longer keep your accessories on longer and not have to waste as much time powering everything down and you know swapping out batteries and whatnot so we're going to plug that in we're going to get a battery on the bottom get a battery on the top and now we have power to the entire rig for the entire day and i ran two 98 watt hour batteries both days uh i started each day at 100 percent we shot for about eight to nine hours and i didn't run out of power one time throughout the day and i only powered down the camera for lunch so yeah i think this is probably like my favorite part of the entire rig i'm not even kidding i love running two batteries Next thing we're going to add is this little extension handle onto the back bottom right side of the camera. And this will just stick off and allow me to operate the camera more easily on the easy rig. Clip that in, boom. And as you can see right there, I now have this nice handle off the back side. I'm still working on figuring out a better solution to run handles to the back right side of the camera. And ultimately, I would love to have one up here on the front left as well, but I'm working on that. I got some parts coming in the mail, so the rig will keep evolving over time. But for this specific job, this is exactly how I had this set up. The next piece we're going to add is just this small rig 15 mil rod. And we're going to run it through this top rod mount from the top handle. 
the reason why we're running this is because this is where we are going to mount our wireless follow focus motor. Uh, this is the PD Movie Live Air 3 or Remote Air. I don't know. This is like their big beefy one. All right, so we've got the wireless focus motor hooked up right there. The next thing that I think I want to put on is probably the microphone. This is the Rode NTG Go or something. I don't even know the names of these things, man. But we are going to slap this into this hot shoe mount, just like this. Boom. And as you can see, the microphone is nice and tidy out of the way on the right side of the rig. And it just keeps everything looking nice and streamlined, tight to the body. So now we need to run power to all of the accessories attached to the rig before we plug in the SDI cable. And before I even do that, I'm actually going to slap on my map box. This is the Tilta MBT12. Had this thing for a few years, holds three trays, and I have absolutely no complaints about this map box. It is an absolute beast. All right, so now we got the map box on. As you can see, the rig has finally come together. And the last thing I'm going to add here, actually not the last thing. This is the second to last thing. We're going to run a power cable from the V-mount plate to the wireless focus motor. All right, so now the last thing that we need to supply power to is the wireless transmitter. And for this job in particular, I just ran an NPF battery, so I will grab one of those. So yeah, just a normal NPF, not sure what size this is. The numbers confuse me on these things. But yeah, we're just gonna plug this right in here. All right, and so now that everything has power, I'm going to go ahead and power on the camera, power on the transmitter, power on the monitor. And once everything boots up, the last thing that we need to do is plug in the SCI cable and we are good to go. All right, everything's got power. We go and plug in the SDI. And just like that, our vertical Komodo rig is now complete. I ran the easy rig all day, so I'll go ahead and slap that on, snap it right in here to the top quick release, and boom, there you have it. The vertical red Komodo rig. I will say this camera is incredible for being able to put it into configurations like this. And uh, yeah, I hope this video helps some of you guys and inspires you to create your own vertical rigs if you do have to shoot vertically. For some of your clients and uh yeah thank you guys for watching i'll try to leave links to everything down below if you want to support me in the channel make sure to use those links because i do get a very small commission on everything that will be linked uh and i'll catch you all in the next one peace